this morning feeling fine. I woke up with hair on my mind. I woke up with joy in my soul. For I knew my Lord had control. Well, I knew I was walking in the light. Cause I've been on my knees in the night. And I prayed to the Lord gave a sign. And now I'm feeling mighty fine. And I'm feeling mighty fine. I got hit up on the ground. Don't you know? Don't you know? Yes, I want you to know. We're the mighty fine. 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 church for about 18 years yes. close to 20 years he and his family we've watched the kids grow up now the kids have all scattered i think they only have about two uh, with them right now but they've worked in churches all over the united states and even other countries and god has used them he was riding a motorcycle not too long ago and the thing flipped with him and he flipped about three times he broke his neck and didn't know he'd be able to walk again and now he's able to walk He's trying to get his strength back in his hands, but God has worked a miracle in his life, and we thank God. So he's a, he's a living witness. Just so thankful for Brother Larry and his family working with us. And he's going to come and share with us the Word of God this time. Larry, good to have you. God bless you, Brother. Well, praise the Lord. I give God the glory for being able to walk or do anything. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, sometimes I ask myself, you know, was this the devil getting after me or was this the Lord? But uh, there's two men in the Bible. Uh, one was Moses. He said, uh, you know, for the sake of Israel, uh, uh, blot out my name out of your book. And God said, those that sinned against me, they're the ones I'm going to blot out of the book. Amen. So Moses wasn't able to, uh, of himself, do anything for man. Because he's just a man. All of sin comes short the glory of God. Amen. And, but then there was Paul. Which we all look at Paul. Boy he's a great guy. Uh, uh, did a lot of great things. But you know he said he wished for the sake of Israel. That uh, he would, would be taken out uh, of the book. Amen. That, uh, but he couldn't do anything for man. Amen. Uh, none of us can do anything for one another other than what uh, humans can do for one another, being kind and courteous and wicked and, and backbiting. And, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, what we ever get into, right? But see, it was God that was able to do something for Israel, but not only Israel, but for the Gentile too. Eh? Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord for that. And, um, you know, uh, we... Uh, Sometimes wonder, you know, does it, the devil made me do it or, or the devil's getting after me? I think it's a loving father, amen? I mean, uh, 
he took me on the way to uh, to do good. Amen. I was gonna, we we're gonna help out a girl's home, but uh, he chose to break my neck. Amen. I can read in the Bible where God uh, broke the, the, the leg of a, a little lamb and carried it around. And uh, but I, I just I got to give God the credit for everything. Amen. amen. Uh, I believe He broke my neck uh, that I might lay my head upon His chest. Amen. Hear His heartbeat. Hear His voice. Get to know Him better. Amen. And uh, uh, today, you know, being asked to come and and uh, share the Word of God. Um, is is a, such a privilege? It's a, it's, it's a responsibility um, that's not to be taken lightly. Amen. And uh, let us let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we praise you and we thank you for this time when we can look into your Word and uh, we can learn something of you, uh, learn something of ourselves, learn something uh, about uh, your creation, uh, Father, your redemption through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and. And for the, just uh, raising him up from the dead, and so that he might sit at the right hand of God, and that we might be able to have faith in that shed blood and uh, have eternal life. And uh, Father, we just thank you for that this morning, and we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit, and uh, that you might do a great work in the midst of us. And we do thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, uh, sometimes we think about, you know, uh, why was such a great price? required why was such a great price required for man for me am i that bad but you know men are bought and sold every day every day and it depends on where you are in the world of how much that might be i mean some greater some less but you know when we think about a drunkard um a drunkard is looked upon as being worthless he's worthless he's good for nothing and you can take some drunkards um, you know, uh, that same drunkard. And what if he was to break the law, do some uh, heinous crime, and uh, be sentenced to, uh, to, to life in prison? All of a sudden, you couldn't buy that drunkard if you were rich. Because he's got to fulfill the requirements of that law 100%. Amen? And that's the way it is with God. He said, if we, if we uh, uh, break one point of the law, we offend one point of the law, we're guilty of all the law. Amen? So that means that uh, nothing could buy us back because we've broken the law. And we will have to fulfill the law 100%. And uh, what man could buy us out of that? As I said, Moses tried. It didn't work. Paul tried. It, it, it just didn't work. Amen? They were the men that they were because of their character and because of God using them. Amen? They were just men. I mean, there isn't anything special about me. There ain't anything special about you. But God could use you. He could use me if he so desired. Amen? And if that we would yield to his will. But a drunkard that's sentenced to life in, in prison, you're not going to get him out of that prison until... He's fulfilled the law. So how are you going to get out of your uh, circumstance of breaking the law? Um, you know, yet the same man is held and he's bound to the law without price. For he must fulfill that requirement. That's something to think about. What have you done against God that you have to pay for? Amen. Broken his law. You know, um, back in Exodus uh, chapter uh, 33, if you turn there, um, Exodus chapter 33, we have an account. Uh, well, back in 32, we have an account of when Moses, uh, he come down off the mount. Remember, he was up there with God and he's come down off the mount. And uh, uh, he thought, uh, you know, when he came down, he saw that there was a golden calf and there was dancing. It says that his, his, uh, his anger uh, waxed hot. And he threw those tablets down and he broke them at the foot of the, of the mount there. And he went down and he took that golden calf and he burned it in the fire. And he ground it up into powder and he cast it upon the waters and he made the people drink it. 
That's, that's, the, that's the anger of a man. What about God? When God's wrath is, is, is uh, put out upon man, upon this earth, it's going to be much worse than a man. Uh, but see, you know, there's, there's a time when we want to know what God has to say. And here in, in uh, chapter 33 and verse 17, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Look at verse 18. And he, this is Moses, said, I beseech thee, show thee, show me thy mercy or thy glory, he said. Show me your glory. Now, isn't that, isn't that something that we would like to all see? Is the glory of God. Amen. I mean, we see, we see in a, in a, as a, a darkly, we, we can't see the glory of God. But you know, uh, here it goes on. And, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. So you're not going to see the glory of God. You're not going to see the face of God. You're not going to see the fullness of God ever in this body because we'd be destroyed. Amen? Amen? But he goes on to say here in verse 21, he says, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place, there is a place by me. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while, I, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and will cover thee with mine hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. See, there was a there's a, there's a great provision made by God. Here Moses says, hey, I, I want to see your glory, God. Because the only way that the other nations of this earth would know that they, are, they were God's chosen nation is that if God be with them. With them. Amen? Because Israel was nothing of herself. Nothing. Just another nation uh, and uh, that was unlike anybody else. Just a, Full of pride and wickedness, vile, full of cursings, idolatry, fornications, all kinds of wickedness. But see, Moses was concerned about that glory being with Israel. And that's why he said that uh, even my name be, be wiped out of your book. Amen? For the sake of Israel. Because God had made a promise. He made a promise that he would take Israel he promised uh, through Abraham a promised land. Amen? A promised land for them. And, uh, but there was a great provision made by God. He said, hey, there's a place here by my side upon this rock. And I'll put you in the cleft of the rock. And he said, when my glory pass, I put my, I put my hand over you. And I'll pass by you. My glory is going to pass by you. Amen? And, you know, so there was a great provision by, made by God. No man could make that provision. No man could stand in, in God's uh, glory. No man. He said, you'll not see my face. Because we would be destroyed. Moses would have been destroyed. Amen? And uh, he says, I'll take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And over in Colossians, if you go over to Colossians chapter 3, um, there, there's a place by God's side. And here in Colossians chapter 3 in verse 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. He says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is what? Hid with Christ in God. Now, when you look back to Moses, 
He's in the cleft of the rock. But if you were to look back at Moses, you'd see God's hand. And Moses behind that hand is life preserved in the cleft of the rock. See, same thing that's here. He says, for ye are dead and your life is hid with, with Christ in God. That's the only way that we can come before God is in that cleft of the rock, which is Jesus Christ. He's the rock. And, and it also says there in verse 4, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So Moses wanted to see the glory of God, but Moses ain't going to see the glory of God in the flesh. And neither are you or I. I don't care how good we are in, in, uh, in um, whatever religion we might have. There's other people listening. They might not go to a Baptist church, but it doesn't matter. Even if we go to a Baptist church, we can sit in a pew for 40, 50, 60, 70 years and still die in our sin and go to hell, even though we were attended a Baptist church. If we're not hid in the cleft of the rock, if we don't get up there and say, yes, Lord, I'll stand where you tell me to stand. See, Moses, and we know Moses, he got hot-headed at times, didn't he? What if he said to God, I'm not going to stand over there. I want to see your glory with my eyeballs. He would have perished in the pride of his own flesh. But because he got up into that, stood on that rock where God told him to stand, in the cleft of that rock, God put his hand over him. The protective hand of God. And that's what Jesus Christ is for us. Hid with Christ in God. And why? Because one day we're going to see the glory of God. But it's going to be when Jesus Christ appears. Amen. And we'll be caught up and be as like him in the air. Um, over in 1 Corinthians, we have another great Bible character, as we've already uh, talked about. And that is Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. It says, uh, What? Know ye not that, you, that, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? How many of us try to live our lives of our own will? Our own, uh, you know, mind, strong-willed, I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to go that way. And God says, no. I want you to get up on that rock. I want you to wait upon me. See, Moses had to get up on that rock, and God put his hand before him. And Moses had to wait upon God till his glory passed by. And that God took his hand that he might be able to see a part of God. And we today, we see a part of God. We have the Holy Ghost within us. If we're saved, if we're a child of God, if we've called upon Jesus Christ, he says that whosoever would call upon his name, thou shalt be saved, amen? And how shall they call upon him whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, if you're sitting in a Baptist church for 30, 40, 50 years, I'm sure that you've heard that Jesus Christ is the way, truth, and life. And no man come unto the Father but by him. The only way. The only way. No other way. And maybe uh, those that are out there hearing, they, they might go to a, uh, they might be a Muslim, or they might be a Buddhist, or they might be a, a Mormon, or a Jehovah Witness, or whatever. Over 5,000 different religions in the world. But you flip the channel, and you heard of Jesus Christ was the payment of your sin through his death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. He's victorious over death and hell. And you too could be victorious over death and hell if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Hey, we all want the grace of God. We want God's mercy. Every man does. But you'll not find it unless you get up on that rock. You get in that rock. That's Christ. That's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And... Um, you know, uh, for ye are bought, there in verse 20, it says, for ye are bought 
with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Bought with a price. The only price. Only one time. Christ will never come back to this earth and be put up on a cross again. He's coming back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. He's coming back. But does your neighbor believe he's coming back? Have you told your neighbor? If you're a child of God, have you told somebody that Jesus Christ is coming back? Have you told somebody that you're going to be caught up in the air? And you're going to be changed in a twinkle of an eye. You're going to be just like Jesus Christ, just as like him. And you're going to see the glory of God, just like Moses wanted to see. And we're going to see him face to face. Amen. Are you bought with a price? This fact is done from God's side and his side only. Just like Moses, he said, I want to see your glory. If it wasn't for God making provision for Moses to stand upon a rock and his hand to be upon him, you would see nothing of God. But see, God made a provision. And it's from his side and same as with that cross. God had to make the provision. He had to bring it about. And he said that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. When he created this, this world and put it all together. And he made man in his own image. He knew man would sin. He said to Adam, in the day that you eat of the fruit in the midst of the garden. He didn't say, hey, well, you know, if you eat the fruit in the midst of the garden. No, he said, in the day that you eat of the fruit. In the midst of the garden, thou shalt surely die. Amen? Because of that one man's sin, sin passed upon all men. So I ask you this morning, have you allowed God to direct your life? I mean, when God says, hey, go to Jesus Christ, you need to believe upon my son. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. God, well pleased in a man, but he wasn't just a man. He was all man, but he was all God. That was God incarnated in flesh. That was the lamb. That was a perfect lamb prepared for the slaughter. Have you obeyed God? You know, God says, come unto me, all ye that are weak and heavy laden in your sin. Sin weighs us down. It keeps us from enjoying life. Having vision of eternity. Sin just cuts that off. I don't care what religion you might have been a part of or are a part of. It cannot buy you eternal life. You have no vision of eternal life. Because at some point when you look out there in your religion, you see, hey, I still have a debt of sin. And it's between me and God. Uh-oh. How do I pay God? God had to pay. And he's the one that gave that, that great gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. So where do you stand today with God? The Bible says you're not, you're not your own. If you've called upon Jesus Christ and your, your, your sins have been washed away in the blood of Christ, you, you've been given the Holy Ghost, he's done surgery that's without hands, you're God's child. He says, you're not, you don't own yourself. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price, with that price of Jesus Christ. And, and, and he says there in verse 20, he says, the price once paid, we are forever his. The conclusion is this right there. Verse 20. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Amen. It belongs to God. And uh, we need to see that man can't, but God can. And that he not only can, he did. He did put his son upon that cross. And you know, that, that, was, that was a gift of God that was a secret from the foundation of the world. Not that Jesus Christ would sit up there on that cross and die and pay the wage of sin. But it says there's a secret there, and that secret is the body of Christ. 
Amen. He's opened up an effectual door unto the Gentiles. He gave us an apostle that was born out of due time. Peter. No, not Peter. Paul. And he preached the gospel. He preached the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The only way to get in to that body. Amen? Amen. Are you a part of the body of Christ today? Amen. If you're not, then you're of your father, the devil, and the deeds of your father will you do. And God's going to have to cast you into hell. And God says he takes no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. Takes no pleasure in it. He didn't make hell for you. He made hell for the devil and all the other devils that followed after and fallen angels. Amen. But God said that if you are outside of Christ, he's going to have to spew you out of his mouth. See, sitting in church, it looks like you're saved. looks like you're, you, you love God. But if you're sitting on the fence, God said he's going to spew you out of his mouth. You're going to have to be cast in the lake of fire. That's the second death. Amen. So at this morning, I challenge you, not with anything of myself, but God says that he gave a gift. And the gift is sufficient. And that gift is Jesus Christ. And I ask you this morning, have you called upon the name of Jesus Christ, believing in your heart through faith? Because it's faith. It's not works. It's not good things. It's nothing of man. It's through faith. It's just taking and believing that there's everything outside of yourself and only in God. Only in God is there salvation. Right. Right. In Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you've never called upon Christ, you need to do it today. Right. Don't wait another moment. We live in a very dangerous world today. Very dangerous world. But it can be a very pleasant and safe world in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. I'm saved. I'm born again. We heard some great songs. Just giving God the glory for what he's done through Jesus Christ and the promises that he's given unto us that are saved and in Christ. Amen? Would you call upon Jesus Christ today before it's ever too late? Amen? Praise God. Amen. Preacher. Thank you, Brother Larry. We're so thankful for the word of God. We thank God for men and women who serve him in different places in different ways. And we're thankful that the message was given today that salvation is only one person. It's not religion. It's not baptism by water. It's not stopping this or starting. It's receiving a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the one that God sent, his only begotten son, as you've heard today came down to this earth here, took your sin, my sin, the sins of the world upon himself. He went to Calvary. There he died and bled and shed his blood. On the third day, he rose again, conquering death, hell, and the grave. Salvation is in Christ. If you've never received Christ as your Savior, the Son of God, the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, no man comes to the Father but by me. You can only come to God through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So right now, you that are listening out there in video land, whatever religion you might have, whatever good works you're trying to perform, listen, you receive Christ as your Savior. Get saved. If you doubt your salvation, you're not sure, right now you can pray a simple prayer. Just like this. Oh God, I know I'm a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned. That includes me. I know I'm lost. I want to be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died on that cross and shed his blood. On the third day he rose again. And Father, salvation is, I thank you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Now Father, help us who know Christ as Savior who've been forgiven the sin, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to yield ourselves to you. As our brother said today, it's yielding, not by works of God, not by works which we have done, but according to his work, he saved us. And now he works with us and in us and through us 
as we yield to you. Lord, help us to serve you today, to love you, to honor you, be your ambassadors, be your workers. Help us to do that under the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Lead us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Discovered the living world. 